Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the head gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm awesome sauce, Nathan. How are you doing? I'm awesome sauce as well. It's Besides being super hot, you're lucky. You, your studio, for the people that don't know, your studio is in a downstairs where it stays nice and cool. And I was an idiot. I set my studio in the upstairs level of our house and it's the middle of August as we're recording and I am just sweating like a, a freaking whore on dollar day over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nathan. Speaking of clients. <laughs> Speaking of clients. So what what do we got on the agenda today? <laughs> Long awkward pause. Well, interestingly it it works right in perfectly with what we're talking about today. We're talking about course correcting. So let's see if we can get this course corrected a little bitch. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can get this course corrected. <laughs> so in last week's episode, we talked about uh, a couple of different ideas around assets and underutilized assets. And one of the one of the symptoms of having underutilized assets and not being as effective or efficient in business as we can is because we need to slow down so we can speed up. And here's, here's really more what I mean about that. We expand and expand and expand, and we add and add and add all of these different services, these different products, these different market segments to our business. And we get to a point where we're spinning too many plates. And if we're good at the thing that we do, oftentimes we can spin those plates well enough to where we don't really drop any of them. But because of the very nature of, of doing that, we often end up doing things that we consider chores. Let's go back to the, the genius zone idea, right? There's 19 things that we can do. 15 of those things suck. They're chores. We can get paid for them, but we don't really enjoy doing them. And it, it's totally like doing work. Now, that leaves four things. Generally, People have two things that they're either not very good at or they just absolutely hate. And generally, there's one or two things that they're really amazing at and they love doing, right? But we find ourselves doing all this shit because we're competent at it. And after, for most of us, not a very long period of time, it gets to the point where shit's not fun anymore, right? Feel like we're stagnating right? Getting bored. Well, this ties right into to last week. Instead of doing a massive pivot and just changing your business and jumping ship, what most of us can do if we take a step back from the whole thing and look at it and go, okay, cool. What is it I love doing? Hmm. Let's Let's stop going wide and let's kind of f- refocus on the stuff that we do like doing and let's figure out a way to get that other shit back off our plate. This is the whole expand contract thing I was talking about last week that you kind of re-brought up towards the end of the show. Course correction is the ability to see, I don't like this. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling like... Fuck all this, right? And oftentimes, if we take a step back from the whole thing and we look at it and go, okay, cool. If I was only responsible for doing what it is that I'm actually enjoying, what is that? What you will find in most cases is that you've grown and evolved beyond your current level of output in that specific area in your business. Okay. Did you follow that? Okay. So we've got all these 19 things that we're doing and we're competent in all of it. And by and large, we start finding that we're not really happy and shit's not working as well as it 
should. We're not feeling fulfilled. Satisfaction's beginning to wane, right? We start thinking about all these things like, um, I've got to do that and I have to do that and I need to do this, and right? And we get into that mentality of where now the whole fucking thing is a chore. If you can step back from the the entire business, if you can step back from all of it and say, if I was only responsible for doing one or two things that I actually really enjoyed doing, what would those be? In that moment, you'll probably find that where you're serving your clients or your market in that specific space, you actually need to evolve and grow in your ability in just that area. For me, it's working with a small group of people on a weekly ongoing basis, right? That's my thing. That's what I really enjoy doing. So when I get to the point where like, I'm ready to just be like, fuck all this, I'm going to go move to the mountains and build a cave, right? When I get to that point, I go, okay, cool. If I was only responsible for doing one thing, what is it? Well, it's that thing, right? It's that thing and maybe another variation of it. Okay, cool. So how do I get all this other shit off my plate? Ah, I need to look at that thing in what I'm doing and I need to get refocused on that aspect of my business. And I find that, oh, I've actually grown and evolved beyond what I'm currently delivering in this area. And it doesn't take but a couple of days, maybe a week or so for most people to, to re-zero in on that aspect of their business. And these other things that are on their plate that are like chores begin finding their way off their plate and into other people's hands or like your 7,000 lead magnets, not necessary, right? redundancies are not always the right thing in business. And so that's kind of, that's kind of the idea with this expand contract thing. We've got to grow, right? We've got to grow personally. We've got to grow professionally. We've got to grow in our business. We've got to grow in our knowledge around what we're able and capable of doing with and for our clients. But we get to a certain point where we're going, fuck, man, I'm doing that and 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 I'm doing all these things and I'm like, eh, this is okay. What are the two or three things, maybe one or two things that you just absolutely are in love with and then go, am I growing in that area? And if you're honest with yourself, you'd probably be like, nope, not really. Awesome. All of your fascination with the thing that you do is now gone and you're a fucking technician. And life sucks to some extent or another. And so what we can do is is we can get refocused on that specific area. You just watched us over the last week or two do a splinter group from our main big Facebook group. What's the purpose of that? It's no longer on client acquisition. Cool. There's two groups, right? People that have problems because they need to get clients and another group of people that have problems because they've got clients. Well, guess what? I found myself in that second bucket and I was still focused in serving the first bucket. And I went, oh, this is why this is not fascinating anymore. I need to refocus what it is that I'm doing. And wouldn't you know it, all these chores and all this shit just found its way off my plate. So I think a lot of us, especially as service professionals, We find ourselves in, and I'm going to use my own example because this is the best way I can explain it. I really like doing sales pages. People hire me to write their sales page and then they say, hey, can you help us with a lead magnet? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good at, I'm good at figuring out lead magnets that'll lead to that sales page. Can you help us with a landing page and upsell and then eventually pushing people to that sales page? So that four step process, a landing page, a lead, a lead magnet, an upsell, and then the initial like sales page for, for a warm audience. Um, I'm really good at, at developing that for people. And I wouldn't have figured that out that I can do that whole process. If I hadn't expanded past what I was comfortable with, what was my gene, my genius zone. But then I also find it, I find myself saying, well, now I need somebody to help drive traffic and I don't like messing with the traffic side. Or we, we also need somebody to help write a webinar. And I'm like, eh, I'm not such a big fan of writing webinars. I can do it, but it's not my favorite thing to do. Or we need somebody to write a follow-up email sequence. Um, 
when it comes to whatever it is that somebody's doing, there's going to be, like you said, we really focused on the how to get clients, but now we're moving into the what to do once you've already got the clients. And I'm finding that I like working in that area better. Um, should you allow mission creep to expand so that you can find those new areas or should you try and keep a, a clamp down on the mission creep? How do you handle? Cause everybody that's got clients is going to have that. Well, can you do this for me? And can, can you then do this for me? And how do you approach that? How do you know whether or not you should be taking on that mission creep? It's a dance. If you've never danced with her, probably not a good idea to sign up for the rest of your life with her. Right. You gotta, you gotta jump in and, and find out. And this is, this is part of that expand contract thing. Test adjust, right? Course correct. Race car drivers on a racetrack, if they start sliding towards the wall, right? Well, the ones that continue looking at the wall end up in the wall. The ones that keep their eyes on the road come out of the slide more often than not. And that's really ultimately what we're talking about here. If you hop in your car and drive on the straightest road in America and take your hands off the steering wheel because one tire might be a little bit less air in it than, than the other three or the angle of the road or your alignments off or whatever, you're going to have to grab that steering wheel and you're going to have to continue to course correct. It's the exact same thing. If you don't know, you got to try it and find out. And then once you do know, then it's all about setting boundaries and managing expectations. But if you've never danced or ridden a skateboard or been a DJ or jumped out of an airplane or all these millions of things, you don't know if it's amazing and if you love doing it and you want it. Let's go back to the client thing, right? Client asks you to do a, a, a traffic and you try it and you're like, I know how to drive traffic, but this is not my genius zone. Awesome. This is your opportunity to go from consultant to advisor. You know people in the marketplace. Put together a little behind the scenes A team. You know how many people have a hard time getting clients? Fucking almost everybody. It's like the biggest market in business is client acquisition, business development, sales, marketing, right? Cool. Well, if you find somebody that's really good at doing the traffic thing, but they suck at dealing with clients or they have a really hard time getting new clients because they're so technically minded that they can't speak English to people that have a business that need traffic, right? Now you go from consultant to advisor. This is exactly what it means. Your scope creep allowed you to go, oh, I know how to do traffic. Yeah, I'll do that for you. Oh, this sucks. This is not what I want to be doing. Well, now you know. But guess what? Now you come to the table with the A-Team or the Avengers or whatever you want to call it, right? And your client says, we want to do this. We want to do that. We want to do this. We want to do that. And you say, perfect. This is the core piece that ties everything together. That's what I do. And all these other things that need to be there and in place, yeah, I has friends, Right? You don't know until you do know. And the only way to know is to jump in with both hands and go all in. Go elbow deep. Yep. Okay. So um, I guess as we're out of here, uh, we're taking off. Um, what, what's your one piece of advice if someone's gotten to the point where their business is more of a hassle, more of a headache, or or even to the point where they're just bored with it and they just want to give up altogether just because it's not fulfilling to them anymore. Um, what would be your, your one piece of advice if somebody's finding themselves in that position? I'd grab a piece of paper and a pen and I'd draw a line right down the middle. And on the left-hand side, I would write down all the aspects of the business and doing the business and dealing with the business that you don't like doing. And on the right-hand side of that paper, I would write down the couple of things that you really enjoy doing. And then I'd ask yourself, if I could only get paid doing those things, would I stay in this business? If the answer to that is yes, then you've got a business where you can actually make more money with less work and less clients and be way more fulfilled and have way more satisfaction. And then guess what? You get to spend the next six months, 12 months, 18 months, 36 months 
re-expanding off of those couple of things at this higher level. And then you'll get to the same point and you'll go, fuck, I want to just burn it down and go live in a cave in the mountains. And then you go, okay, cool. Landon said to grab a piece of paper, right? And write down all the shit on the left-hand side that you don't like doing and the couple of things on the right-hand side. And then ask yourself this question. If I got paid to only do those couple of things, would I stay in this business? So my recommendation is don't delete this episode after you listen to it. Keep it saved on your iPhone and go back and listen to it every 18 months or so. We should rename this one the frustration episode. (laughs) There you go. All right, Landon, another fantastic episode. If people want to check out more of this here podcast, where can they go? Salesgorillapodcast.com. Bitches. Nailed it. All right. Salesgorillapodcast.com. Until next time, we will catch you later. I love some of you. Peace out, Cub Scouts.